Oh yeah, that's good. Okay, Barbara, go ahead. Testing, testing. We're doing a test here for the all candidates forum. We're just doing a sound check. We're going to be doing a picture check. So if those of you watching at home could please just bear with us for a couple of minutes while we let technology do its thing. Thank you very much. All right, let's go to Jackie. Test, test. Okay, go ahead. Testing, one, two, three. Okay. Uh, Dennis. Oh, Dennis. Oh, Dennis. <laughs> oh, Dennis. Mike. Testing. One, two, three. Testing, test, test, Jonah. And Aaron? Good evening, everyone. It's great to be here tonight. Test, test, test. Okay, that, uh, that sounds all right to me, but I'm sure other people will comment if we have a problem. So let's, uh, let's get going. Tell me, are we going? All right, good evening everyone and welcome to this All Candidates Forum for the Fraser Nicola Riding. I'm Barbara Roden, I'm going to be your moderator tonight. We're very fortunate to have all five of the candidates who are running in uh, the election for uh, Fraser Nicola Riding. So just a couple of ground rules to go over before we get going. We're here at the Hub Online Network studio at the Ashcroft Hub. We're going to start off with each of the candidates. They will have three minutes to introduce themselves. We drew their names in, random law, in a random draw, and so they're going to be going in that order. At the end of the evening, each candidate will have two minutes in which to wrap up, and we will go in reverse order to how they started. Now we have a number of questions already here. Some have been prepared by the Hub Online Network, and some have been submitted by members of the public in advance. Now most of them are addressed to all the candidate, candidates and they will each have one minute to speak uninterrupted if they choose. A few questions are directed at one candidate in particular. He or she will have one minute to reply and the other candidates also have one minute each to reply if they choose. A timekeeper will be keeping track of the response time and letting the candidates know when their time is nearly up and when it is up. Now those of you who are watching at home, welcome. Thank you for watching. We invite your comments on the live stream of tonight's All Candidates Forum and you will also have an opportunity to ask questions during the course of the forum. If you have a question, please mark it as a question, type it in the comments section of the Facebook page and say whether you would like it directed to one candidate in particular or to all of the candidates. We will be monitoring the comments feed and we will be picking up any questions. If it duplicates something that we already have on our list, unless it's significantly different, we probably won't be asking it because we are going to try to keep this to two hours. Now halfway through, we're going to give each candidate an opportunity to direct one question at one of their fellow candidates. There will be one minute for each response. So now, without further ado, we're going to get started. Here are your candidates for Fraser Nicola, and we're going to start with independent candidate Mike Bungu. Hello, thank you very much. <coughs> election after election, the political parties come and offer crumbs while they hide the pie. Send me to Victoria and allow me to fight for what you deserve. This is your province, a change in perspective is required. In Victoria, I will immediately fight for a state-of-the-art drug rehabilitation facility in every community, a fully functioning hospital in Merritt, Hope, Ashcroft, and improved health facilities throughout the riding, a reduction in small business tax slowed by 50%, a reduction in small business and residential rental costs, a grant for every newlywed to start their future, which includes purchasing a home. This election, we must think about the greater good, a change in perspective is required. If we can instill a new outlook in government, we might secure our future. Immediate action must be given to the family, small business, the mental health and addictions pandemic, 
and the retirees of our communities are to thrive. My name is Mike Bungu. I am competing as an MLA candidate in this provincial election in the Fraser Nicola riding, and I ask your permission to serve you and our communities. In this race, I'm in this race because I care. I see our communities and our people suffering. We are regressing and not progressing. We must hold our institutions accountable. Truth to power. The retiree is not experiencing the golden years. I will fight for a monthly bonus subsidy for every retiree. It's good to be kind to the elderly. Perhaps this money will allow more retirees to enjoy life. It's extremely difficult to establish and maintain a family. I will fight in Victoria to get every newlywed couple assistance establishing a family and home. I will fight to reduce residential rental costs. The mental health and addictions pandemic is destroying communities. I will fight for a state-of-the-art drug rehabilitation facility in every community and fully functioning hospitals and improved health facilities. We deserve this. <coughs> small business is on the verge of extinction. I will fight to allow small business to keep more of the money they earn. More, moreover, I will work to reduce business rental costs. This is the goal. Now it's a matter of getting into government and making it happen. As a city councillor for the city of Merritt, I've learned how to work with government and bring about change. As a nonfiction author, I've examined the socio-political happenings of the past century, in particular the past 50 years, and I'm familiar with where government might have slipped and how to get government back on track. What we require today is a new perspective in Victoria. A shift in attitude is required. As a candidate unaffiliated with any political party, I can better represent you. And we've seen successful unaffiliated MLAs before, such as Vicki Huntington, Delta South. She served her constituents well, as does Jody wilson Rabel, And I believe, as she does, truth to power. If you've given up on government, allow me to restore your faith. You are not alone. I will fight for you. This provincial election, support the underdog. Elect Mike Bungu, MLA. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, the next candidate to introduce himself is Jonah Timms of the BC Green Party. Hi, thank you. My name is Jonah Timms and I'm the BC Greens candidate for the riding of Fraser Nicola. And that's a riding that I would like to acknowledge lies within the traditional territories of several nations uh, in British Columbia, including the Sokotine, the Statlium, the Shikwetan, the Silk, the Anthakatan, and the Stalo. I live in Lillooet, and I'm a First Nations Relations Advisor for the Ministry of Forests. I've lived in small towns for most of my life. My dad was a single parent father who raised three boys on a shoestring budget. <coughs> I know what many families are going through right now. COVID has exposed a lot of problems with our society and how we interact with each other. The old top-down way of doing things just isn't working, and oftentimes it's making matters worse. I'm running on a platform of hope, a platform of strong rural communities, meaningful reconciliation and action on climate change. It's 2020, and it's time that the BC government took its relationship with Indigenous communities seriously. We made a historic step last year by implementing the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People, but we need to implement changes to how we work with Indigenous governments, and we need to ensure that those changes come with adequate resources. Climate change is an ever-increasing threat to our communities through flooding and wildfires. But we can make early investments in mitigation and reducing our climate footprint. I'm also committed to working on implementing landscape level and ecologically centered forest and fuel management. Job losses are worrying everyone in the riding right now. But we can work on keeping our jobs within our local communities by ensuring that our raw resources like logs and food are processed in BC and within our communities. I'm tired of seeing mills shut down year after year. The BC Liberals have created a mess and the NDP hasn't cleaned it up. I want good jobs to be created and then stay in our communities. The BC Greens and myself believe that now is not the time to stop investing in the services and infrastructure that we all depend on. BC Greens are known for tackling big issues and working together across party lines to solve them. We need to have an honest conversation about these problems and how we want to solve them, and to do so, we need more Greens at the table. 
My name is Jonah Timms, and I'm your BC Greens candidate for Fraser Nicola. Thank you. Our next candidate uh, representing the BC NDP party is Aaron Schumahetza. Thank you, Barbara. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge that I'm speaking uh, on the unceded territory of the Inkligatmuk people. Uh, I'd like to thank the Ashcroft Hub uh, for organizing this important debate. And to my fellow candidates, thank you for putting your names forward. I look forward to the discussion tonight. My name is Aaron Schumahetza and I'm your NDP candidate for Fraser Nicola. I was born and raised in Merritt uh, from a ranching family. I love this region and the people who live here. I have a long history of involvement in helping the communities of this region grow and thrive. Uh, I'm currently a counselor for the Lower Nicola Indian Band, and I was honored to serve my community as the elected chief for six years. As a lawyer of 14 years, I fought uh, for to ensure residential school survivors uh, get the support that they needed. If elected as your MLA, I will fight for all the communities across the riding to ensure that our communities are represented in government. People in our region are struggling, but in BC, we'll get through this pandemic together by taking care of each other, no matter what gets in our way, that's my commitment to you. Andrew Wilkinson and the BC Liberals would take us backward. His plan hands the biggest benefits to those who need it the least, and he makes you pay for it, either with higher costs for car insurance, higher rent, medical premiums, hydro and tuition fees, or with cuts to the services we rely on more than ever, like healthcare. We can't afford to go back to this. Before COVID-19 hit, John Horgan and the BC NDP had begun fixing many of the problems we face here in BC. Problems created through 16 years of BC liberal neglect. The progress we've made together continues with our plan. We will focus on building a British Columbia where strong public services are always there when people need them where we will meet the challenge of the, the climate <coughs> crisis, where workers and small businesses are at the front of our economic recovery. Here at, in Ashcroft and around the riding, we face big challenges over the next four years. John Horgan and our, our team will always work for you. Together, we can keep BC moving forward for all of us. Thank you very much. Our next candidate representing the BC Liberal Party is Jackie Taggart. Good evening, everyone. And I would also like to acknowledge that we are on the unceded territory of the Nukatma people. And it is a pleasure to be here in my hometown. And I'd like to welcome all the other candidates. Um, I'm Jackie Taggart, and I have lived in Ashcroft since I was six years old. My dad moved here to work at the mine and uh, it has provided an excellent life for uh, my family, my brothers and sisters, and also uh, for my children. Ashcroft and Fraser Nicola is a riding that depends on natural resources. We are very fortunate to have a very diverse riding. In my uh, community, there I don't think there's a uh, committee that I haven't served on. I started my political career on school board when my children started school. And I had the honor of uh, serving as the president of the BC School Trustees at one time, at which time it interested me in provincial politics. Because when you're lobbying and you're trying to get things done, you have to learn how to advocate very strongly at that level. I also served on town council, which I thoroughly enjoyed. I think that town councils have an incredibly important job in setting the tone in the community and making sure that people have a vision of where they want to live and making that vision come to fruition. I now serve in my second, I just completed my second term as your MLA, and I can say it's an absolute honor. I am excited about this election. We are in unprecedented times. We are seeing unemployment at numbers we haven't seen uh, for a long, long time. People are challenged. Businesses are closing. 
and we need a bold plan to move out of the pandemic. I can tell you the BC Liberals have that plan. We're going to build opportunity in BC with more money in your pocket to create jobs and investment in every part of the province. We're going to eliminate the PST, which will give people that 7% in their pocket and more money to spend in local businesses. We need to stimulate the economy. We will eliminate the small business tax and we will also form and appoint an independent fair tax commission to review all provincial taxes, including the NDP's 23 new and increased taxes. We're also going to tackle childcare. John Horgan and the NDP promised $10 a day daycare in the last election, 2017. And I can tell you that less than 2% of the daycare spots are $10 a day. We are committed to uh, provide $10 a day childcare for anyone with a family income of under $60,000. If you make under $90,000, it would be $20 a day, and under $120,000, it would be $30 a day. So uh, a childcare plan that meets the needs of parents. I've got lots to talk about tonight, and I'm looking forward to sharing the whole platform with you. And I ask for your support on October 24th. Vote Tegger. Thank you very much. Thank you. And now we have Dennis Adamson, who is running as an independent candidate. Yeah, good evening. Um, thanks for having this. It, uh, it's wonderful to get to uh, speak to the public. My name is Dennis Adamson, and I live in Yale, BC. I'm serving my fourth term as electoral director. Um, sorry, I, um, I'm running as an independent because the parties are just self-serving. They're only worried about their corporate friends or the urban um, people, like as in the NDP, the, their votes in the urban, so they're going to build a billion dollar uh, sky train for them. And, and the Liberals, they're going to, we're still paying off their buddies from last time. Um, there's nobody right now speaking out for small town rural BC. And I want to be that voice for small town and raise the issues that are important to the people in Fraser Nicholas, such as jobs, economic development, small business, fighting climate, health care, access for small communities, affordability, transportation, infrastructure, and First Nation issues. I, the parties have taken democracy off the table. It's, it's, I've been a member of, of two parties, and what you do is you uh, do whatever the party tells you, is basically how it works. So um, if the party, if I, if I go to uh, be your representative in Victoria, if I see something good in one party, like I, you know, I can vote for that, and if I see something good in another party, I can vote for that. It, it's, it's better for you. Um, just, I want to say that uh, a moral, there is a, a moral test that, uh, for how the government uh, is and how it treats its weakest members, the sick, the needy, the handicapped, the old, and the children, shows how they really are. In the province of British Columbia, according to section 14.1 and 14.2, of the Fa Child and Family Act, it clearly states, if you know somebody's being abused and you do nothing about it, you can be sentenced to six months in jail or $10,000 fine or both. So I asked this at Hope, and I never got an answer. Um, Wes Pigeon, a professional counselor, came to actually every one of the three parties with with um, to tell them about abuse in the Mr. Adamson, yeah. your time is up. sure. Thanks. Thank you very much. I'll bring it up later. Thank you. 
So we've had all five candidates introduce themselves. We're going to jump right into the questions. The first one is about health care. I'm going to start with Mr. Shumahetsa. There are ongoing concerns about the fact that the emergency department at the Ashcroft Hospital is only open weekends, not 24-7 as in the past. What would you do to advocate for better emergency department coverage at the hospital here in Ashcroft, which serves a much larger catchment area? So Mr. Shumahetsa. Thank you for the question. Uh, British Columbians deserve better health care. And when the BC Liberals were in power for 16 years, uh, they gave tax breaks to the wealthy and we had to pay for it. Uh, the BC NDP have a platform and we've been uh, moving forward and we've also done some important things in the past three and a half years. Uh, we're committed to building 13 new or improved hospitals. Uh, we're also committed to hundreds of new doctors, nurses and health care workers through our primary care plan and uh, we're also committed to $1.6 billion more into the healthcare system to hire 7,000 more staff and to fight uh, COVID-19. Um, so we have a lot of work to do, and if I'm your MLA, I will do everything I can to uh, work with the government to ensure we deal uh, with the issue here and make healthcare more accessible. Thank you, Mr. Timms. Thank you. The BC Green Party is committed to uh, further funding of our, both our mental and our physical health care. Uh, the BC Greens understand that, that health care, uh, certainly for the physical and the mental, is, is imperative for a, a community. And as your MLA, I would fight for funding for uh, these small community services that are, you know, unfortunately they've been cut in the past and we need to start investing in our small communities again so that our communities can be livable and sustainable and places where people want to raise their families and where people want to grow and age and uh, live their, their golden years in. So the BC Greens are, are committed to uh, increasing funding for mental health care and ensuring that that is input to our medical services and then, um, and then fully funding our uh, physical health care as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Bungu. Yes, thank you for the question. Well, government is not treating rural, rural BC fairly. <coughs> they treat rural BC folk as second class citizens. The Liberals and the New Democratic Party are the reason the health care system is failing. For them to come by and now suggest that they're going to repair it, I don't know. But my plan is to institute state-of-the-art drug rehabilitation facilities in every community to bring back fully, fully functioning hospitals in Merritt, Hope, Ashcroft, to improve every single health facility in the other uh, centers. Again, government has been treating rural BC as second-class citizens. We need to change that. We need to bring a new perspective, and I can do that. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Adamson. Uh, yes. Uh, the, the parties have failed us in this, on this uh, item. The Hope Hospital hasn't delivered a baby in over 20 years. Uh, they don't have anybody to do that. That's, um, they, what they basically are is an emergency stop and ship them out to uh, Chilliwack or, or Langley or wherever they go. Um, but in hope, it's just 10 bed emergency center. I've asked uh, um, the NDP Minister Adrian Dix to come and, and visit it, and he said he would, but he never came. Um, I believe that, that we have to have really good hospitals in these areas, Ashcroft, because you got, you know, lots of people going by, you got the mine. And in hope, you got all the people going by. So it, more hospitals. Thank you. Yeah. And Ms. Taggart. Thank you very much. This is an ongoing situation in Ashcroft. And uh, we are very fortunate to have a committee that works very hard locally in order to advocate for services at the hospital. Um, 
I have met with the CEO of Ministry of Health. I have met with the Minister of Health, and I can assure you, Adrian Dix is very aware of the challenges that we're seeing at the hospital. I know the importance of a, a functioning hospital, and I will advocate with everything I have to make sure that we have the services available. One of the things that I am absolutely um, uh, adamant about is that we need transparency from Interior Health. And we need Interior Health to be honest with us about service, about scheduling, about staffing, and we need to be able to trust that. And so I uh, support the work of the committee and the work of the village in order to um, move this forward. And I look forward to a time when we have 24-7 ER. Thank you very much. Our next question also concerns health care. It took more than five years from the time that the Clinton and District Assisted Living Society presented a 160-page proposal for seniors housing in Clinton to the Ministry of Housing and more than three years since funding was announced for work to actually start on building the units. What would you do to ensure that more seniors housing is built in the region and that it is built without these delays, which have seen many seniors have to move away from the area because of the lack of seniors housing? And we're going to start this one with Mr. Timms. Thank you. Uh, you know, the, this issue strikes close for me. My great-grandmother lives in Clinton and my, my great-grandfather did as well before he passed. So I fully understand the need for further housing support in Clinton and throughout the riding, frankly. Uh, so, you know, it's, I fully, you know, I, we need more housing and the way to do that is to further invest in our small communities and get ways to improve our seniors care uh, and one way to do that is to, to, to improve our services in our small towns. We need uh, more housing for our seniors and for other folks as well, but uh, for seniors certainly, and we need to do it in a safe way that ensures that our, if we are spending public dollars that they are spent responsibly and transparently so that everyone knows that our seniors and our elders are receiving the best care that they can. Red or the yellow? Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Bungu, Nick, you're next. Yes, um, I strongly feel that government needs to move quicker. The machine is too slow. And this is the cause. Uh, this is what occurs. Seniors housing takes four or five years to establish. Um, and this should not be the case in government. This is one thing I will do. I will attempt to get government moving quicker. Senior housing is required in every community. And this I will advocate for, senior housing in every community that requires it. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Adamson? Uh, yes, this is a concern about every community as well. I, I know that uh, Yale, where I live, they, they've been wanting a, a senior's home for, for quite a few years. Um, usually the problem we find is that the higher levels of government want you to own the land. And for... Um, you know, a nonprofit to, to buy land to be built on uh, old folks home on is is really you know it's hard to do. I I know that we should have more. I don't know how to explain it, but uh, in hope they have a, a, a living place for the seniors that it's it's um, low cost and it was built by the three levels of government. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Deggert? Thank you very much, and I want to say congratulations to the committee in Clinton who have been successful and tenacious on this project. Uh, the project required the removal of the old school, and we were able to negotiate that um, while the BC Liberals were still in place. And we committed the money as the Liberal government. The holdout came when the government changed. But this group was tenacious. And I can tell you that they were walking on air when the first shovel went in the ground. I've been up, I've uh, toured the site. Um, amazingly, three days before the election, they got a phone call and they went from 10 units to 20. That quickly. So um, if you've got a group that's interested, they, uh, I say let's get going. And the BC Liberals will commit money to seniors housing 
out of our $8 billion infrastructure improvements over three years. Thank you. And Mr. Shumahetsa. Thank you. Uh, during this pandemic, our, our, our seniors are mo at most risk, and we need to keep them healthy and safe. There's many uh, things that the NDP has done in the last three and a half years, and there's a lot more work we need to do. Uh, we have to uh, fix understaffing in, in many of our, our seniors' homes. Uh, we're committed to hiring 7,000 new workers uh, in long-term care and assisted living. Uh, we're also uh, committed to uh, building new public long-term care homes where people can get quality care. Uh, we built more houses in the last three and a half years than the Liberals did in the, the previous 16. Uh, John Horgan is the only leader with a real plan to challenge, to, uh, John Horgan's the only leader with a real plan to tackle these challenges. Okay. Thank you, and our final question under healthcare. Um, over the last few decades, there has been continual erosion of jobs in healthcare, such as medical uh, laboratory technologists. This has affected all areas of the province, but smaller remote areas are especially hard, hard hit. In the 1990s, many of the medical laboratory technology programs were shut down. What do you propose to, propose to help Interior Health continue to provide the quality of health care the citizens of this area deserve, such as training programs that are closer to home at places like Thompson Rivers University? We're going to start with Mr. Bungu. Yes, uh, I will immediately encourage uh, government to uh, make uh, these programs available in respect to lab technicians. And then I will encourage folks to uh, enroll in these programs. Government needs to do much more when it comes to health on all levels. Um, and in respect to uh, healthcare workers, and rural BC, perhaps we need to provide them an incentive to come here, a bigger incentive. Um, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Adamson? Um, I guess it's, it's hard to have training in every little uh, community, but I believe that, uh, you know, there's um, necessary to do it we, we we need to get people to come we want to keep the kids at home so if we we have good jobs for them like lab jobs they'll stay in home in in hope it seems to me that the only jobs the kids have waiting out of high school are working at mcdonald's or or uh, other restaurants so there's really no desire to go any further education, but if we had opportunities like this, then I'm sure kids would go on further. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Eggert. Thank you very much, and, and I think that there are many gaps in healthcare, and um, I would be happy to uh, sit down with the group to look at where the gaps are, and to say um, how do we uh, jointly lobby for the kind of training close to home that we need. Um, rural BC is challenged when staffing in healthcare, and uh, I, we know that when people are trained close to home, that they have more tendency to practice at home. So I'd be happy to uh, sit down with colleagues um, in other uh, uh, ridings like Kamloops and say, hey, we need to get together and we need to lobby for this program. Thank you uh, for the question, Barbara. One thing I, I've heard he here around the table tonight is the, the importance of health care in rural communities. I agree 100%. Uh, People in places like Ashcroft and other small communities in our riding have the right to health care, just like the people that live in Kelowna, Vancouver, and Kamloops. And the BC NDP have committed to um, to move forward with these urgent primary care centers. Uh, 20, we have 21 so, for, uh, so far and 10 more on the way. Um, and through these care centers, we've committed to hundreds of new doctors, nurses, and healthcare workers through our primary care plan. Uh, we have also committed to uh, launching BC's second 
medical school to expand our health care workforce we know there's a shortage of nurses doctors and health care workers and we are going to do everything we can to bring them here to ashcroft and beyond thank you and mr timms thank you what's evident to me tonight is that while health care is of utmost importance to rural communities uh, previous governments have consistently been underfunding our health care and like I said, I am committed to ensuring that our communities receive the services that they need. Uh, and if this, if this means that we need more lab techs, then I am ready to sit down and listen uh, and work on ensuring that uh, close institutions like TRU and NVIT uh, offer some of these programs that are required for our communities. Um, because the BC Greens and I are committed to sitting down and listening to experts and crafting policy and legislation and programs that fit the local communities best, not with offering blanket uh, checks to large areas, because we understand that we want to listen to the communities first and get their input on how best to spend the money in the local area. in from someone who would like it uh, directed to uh, Jackie Taggart. So the question is, Andrew Wilkinson has said that the Liberals will eliminate PST for one year. Could you share the costs to businesses to retool their computer and cash register systems to no longer collect the PST? It is assumed that these costs will double as they will need to retool again when the PST is reintroduced 12 months later. Thank you, and that is a cornerstone of our uh, recovery plan, is the first year of no PST. Um, it is a request that came through um, Chambers of Commerce and uh, business associations to the government. Uh, we have listened to those businesses. I would expect that we would be sitting down talking about how that transition would happen and where those costs would be, and we would be assisting small businesses in, in, uh, with those transition costs because we know our small businesses are sitting at their kitchen tables at this time saying, are we going to be here after Christmas? They have had a tough year. We are trying very hard to restart the economy and trying very hard to support small businesses. So um, I, I think that we uh, would expect that those costs would be talked about and we would find a solution so that small businesses weren't stuck with the cost. Okay, thank you. And this next question is, oh, would any of the other candidates like to address that? I would. Mr. Shimahetsa? Thank you. Uh, these are definitely tough times as we go um, move through the pandemic and families are struggling. And the, the BC Liberal PST plan would help really mainly help uh, the most wealthy. And People don't pay PSD on things like groceries, rent, and child care. Our plan uh, provides a benefit to families of $1,000 uh, whose annual income is under uh, $125,000 and, um, and a $500 benefit for individuals whose income is less than $62,000. So our plan is putting back uh, money back into the families that actually need it. Um, so uh, we need to help the people and the families uh, throughout the riding. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bungu, you'd like to reply to this as well? And Mr. Timms? All right. Mr. Bungu first. Yes, I strongly feel that our current government has failed us, has failed small business. During this COVID uh, pandemic, we should have found a, another way of dealing with small business instead of shutting them down, shutting down communities, the damage that has done, can we recover from it? I'm not sure. But what these two parties are doing now is throwing crumbs your way. Um, and we need to recognize that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Timms. Thank you. The BC Liberals have a long history of cutting social services here in British Columbia. And with this tax cut, I can't trust them to continue providing these essential services that are required to remain at their current levels. I mean, I've spoken to voters all across the riding who still talk about the amounts of service cuts that were announced and implemented the last time the BC Liberals were elected. 
Massive blanket tax cuts are not how you stimulate the economy. We need to be using public money in a deliberate and thoughtful way that will support people and businesses who need it the most. Be thank you. Okay, thank you. Well, coincidentally, the next question is directed at Mr. Schumahetsa, and it does concern uh, Mr. Horgan's promise of one-time payments of $1,000 for families and $500 for single people. Uh, and the question is, while everyone recognizes that COVID-19 has dealt a blow to families and businesses across the province, when will the spending stop and serious attempts at dealing with the province's record deficit begin? Well, as... Um Thank you for the question, and it's a, it's a good question for sure. Um, as uh, everybody uh, knows, this uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic is really unprecedented in, in the world, in our country, uh, and, in, and in British Columbia. Uh, we do need to, uh, I think we could look back prior to COVID-19, where the province had three uh, balanced budgets. Uh, we also um, have taken steps where we had uh, the second lowest um, unemployment in the uh, in in Canada, and uh, yeah, and we have also uh, lower taxes. So um, this is an important question, and uh, we do need to be fiscally responsible, and we have in the have in the past. And uh, looking forward, uh, we have to balance that with taking care of people. Okay, thank you. Would any other candidates like a chance to respond, Ms. Taggart? Mr. Bungu, take them in that order. So, Ms. Taggart first. Thank you very much. And I think we are in unprecedented times. We are trying very hard to um, stimulate the economy, but I'm not sure that a $1,000 payout from a $1.5 billion recovery fund uh, is the way to do it. Uh, the BC Liberals are, co are um, committed to move towards balanced budgets after a vaccine is available. And uh, we commit to look at a, um, a financial budget plan um, by, the t by the fall of 2021. And we know uh, we have experience in um, fiscal management. We left the NDP a $2.8 billion surplus in 2017. And in 2018, they increased taxes, raising $5.5 billion on 23 new and increased taxes. So I would suggest to you that we have the experience to be fiscally um, good managers. Okay, thank you. And Mr. Bungu? Yes. Uh, the NDP government shut down communities and locked down people. There must have been a better way to deal with the COVID situation. The damage done to the human condition is immense. I don't trust them to think of the right solutions, and I don't know how much damage they will do if there is a second shutdown. In government, I will work to find a solution that does not involve shutting down communities, shutting down small businesses, and locking down people. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we move on to our next question, which is directed at all the candidates, and we will be starting with Mr. Adamson to answer. Sure. The village of Cash Creek has suffered extensive flooding in four of the past six years, and climate change plus the effects of the 27 wildfires means that these events will almost certainly continue. What will you or your party do to assist Cash Creek and other communities that are now being hit by extensive seasonal flooding in trying to be proactive to mitigate the effects of these events? Okay, thank you for that question. It's, it's a concern all throughout BC because we're surrounded by lots of rivers and creeks. I um, know that if I'm elected, I will go to the higher level of governments, federal. They do have uh, uh, grants available for diking um, and work, you know, every, work with each community because the situation will be different in every community. But, uh, you know, Thinking's a, a good thing, and a lobby for that money. Okay, thank you. And Ms. Taggart? Well, we've seen uh, the effects of mountain pine beetle, we've seen the effects of fires, and we've seen the effects of floods. And we're um, an area that has had more than our share. And um, 
I think that as we talk about climate change, we need to recognize that we need to accelerate our efforts on climate adaptation uh, to ensure we meet the changes to our river systems, our sea level rise, and our wildfire risk. And I think that all of us realize how important that is in this region. And um, I would commit to make sure that that is a priority in government, that uh, it, is, uh, it comes with funds available and I'm impressed with how uh, the communities have uh, gotten through the last through three or four years and also with the planning by the municipalities. Okay, thank you. Mr. Schumahetza. Uh, thank you for the question. Um, climate change affects uh, all parts of the world, and including here in Fraser Nicola. Uh, over the last years, we have uh, had unprecedented fires and, and flooding. Uh, with the Elephant Hill fires. Uh, here as well, we had 13 or 12 or 13 homes burned down on the Ashcroft Reserve. We need to do more. We need to be proactive, not reactive, and we need to be uh, proactive in, in having a plan uh, for emergency response. As well, we have to address the issue of climate change. Uh, we at the BCNDP worked uh, with Andrew Weaver, a world-renowned climate scientist, and we uh, move forward with Clean BC, which is the most ambitious climate plan on the continent. Uh, we have a lot of work to do, but we will keep up the fight to uh, deal with climate change in a real way. Thank you very much. Mr. Timms. Thank you. Uh, we need to look at the changes coming on the horizon and ensure that BC communities are strong enough to weather them. By taking action now, we can make ourselves resilient to the inevitable changes that we will experience in the coming years, while also creating jobs and opportunities for all British Columbians. And I've worked on fire smarting programs previously. I am currently working on wildfire risk reduction projects in communities in the riding. Uh, so I know what's required to make communities safe from wildfires and floods. Thank you very much. And Mr. Bungu. Yes, uh, I strongly feel quicker response times are required. Government needs to figure out a way to respond to communities immediately. Grant money should not be so difficult to access in these situations. Uh, as soon as I get into government, I will begin immediately reducing the amount of red tape that prevents municipalities from accessing grant money. You know, uh, Long-term planning is also re required, and our communities must work as one, and government must facilitate this uh, oneness. The ideas that the NDP candidate shares are not his own. They are handed down by the NDP master, the party leader. I'd like to hear some of Aaron's uh, own ideas, if he's permitted to share them. Thank All right. You. Thank you, and our next question is also about the environment. Regulations are now in place outlining how by 2040 every new car sold in BC will be a zero emission vehicle powered by clean electricity. What will your party do to ensure that there are sufficient electric vehicle charging stations beat, built to meet the demand over the next 20 years and that the cost for building and maintaining these stations is not borne by the taxpayer in some form, the way the taxpayers did not pay to have gas stations built. And we're going to start with Ms. Taggart. Well, um, we all know that as we look at uh, climate change targets, that uh, infrastructure will have to be built. And um, part of that, as we do the planning, is um, our gas stations uh, and the taxes on our, in our gas uh, help to maintain roads. So um, we have said we will appoint an independent fair tax commission. We need to look at where the taxes come from and where they go and how do we incentivize um, people to build uh, the kind of infrastructure that we're looking for in order to meet that target. Okay, thank you very much. Mr. Shumahetsa. Thank you. Uh, I believe that this question is uh, actually connected to the previous one. Uh, the BC Liberals said they clear, uh, cared about climate change, but they failed to act. Uh, specific to electric vehicles, uh, we um, have offered um, 
rebates for electric vehicles and home efficiency upgrades. Uh, we also passed the Climate Change Accountability Act uh, to legally require government accountability on emission uh, reduction targets. Uh, the, the, question, the questioner is quite correct in that we need more infrastructure so uh, more people can uh, have the choice of electric vehicles at, at, a, at, a, at a reasonable price. So uh, the NDP is committed to uh, moving in that direction with net zero emissions by 2050. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Timms. Thank you. I, I find it very interesting that uh, Mr. Schumacher uh, was talking about uh, clean energy when his party supported Bill, Se Bill 17, which would take away uh, BC Hydro's requirement for energy self-sustainability here in British Columbia and open us up to potentially buying energy from other jurisdictions with uh, less clean uh, energy alternatives. So I, I find that very interesting, but uh, certainly uh, we should be offering uh, the ability and the options for fellow citizens here in, uh, in British Columbia to, to fuel up their electric vehicles while they're on the go. And uh, I've seen some very excellent um, business partnerships with uh, allowing electric vehicles on their stations. And certainly uh, this would be an excellent thing to put our, uh, our carbon tax funding towards. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bungu. Yes, I think here it's vital to work with the municipalities uh, to place these charging stations in the appropriate areas. And we must encourage business to take the lead so that government isn't left with the bill. Clean energy is a must. It is the future. And if we can change government's outlook, we can introduce clean energy within a decade. Currently, government seems to be the barrier uh, to clean energy. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Adamson. Yes, I agree that uh, the electric cars are coming and we have to do something. To, uh, we have to build more and more chargers, whether we uh, somehow work out with uh, private companies to do it or we just do it and um, pay for it. The best way for BC to deal with climate change is to move away from our dependency on fossil fuels and, the, and entered the realm of uh, energy sources such as solar, wind, tidal. The present uh, carbon tax is nothing but a tax grab. All the monies collected by the BC government should be channeled into supporting clean technologies such as electric cars, and 25% uh, should at least go to the universities to study and develop better uh, t technology. All right, thank you. And we move on to another question. Uh, this one is about the Ashcroft Slough Society. It's going to go first to Mr. Schumacher. Um, what do you know about the Ashcroft Slough Society and what kind of support can you offer the society with respect to their goal of trying to regain public access to the Ashcroft Slough lands? Thank you for the question. I, I live in Merritt, but I have family here in the Ashcroft area. And uh, one of the, the things about this uh, beautiful part of the world is I think we should all have access to you know, beautiful places to hike and enjoy the scenery. And uh, so I have actually visited um, the, the site where the terminal is. And, and uh, you have community members that want access to uh, a beautiful part of this area. And then we also have the terminal where people are employed. So there's a, there's a balancing act of of giving people access to the beautiful country here, as well as um, the, the employment at the terminal. So if I'm the MLA, I will do whatever I can to facilitate real dialogue on where we can actually look at the issue and problem solve and work together so we can have a win-win for everybody. Okay, thank you. Mr. Timms. Thank you. Uh, I. Um, yeah, I, I, I completely think that, um, yeah, the, the two desires on both sides of the Ashcroft Slough uh, aren't mutually exclusive. We, we do need to work together on solving this, uh, this, this concern uh, amicably, and uh, certainly I, I do feel like there's a, a way forward for both parties to have uh, access to the slough and also ensure that, uh, that jobs and safety aren't, uh, aren't hindered either. So as your MLA, 
I would serve to open dialogue and ensure that grant, grant funding or provincial funding is allocated to, uh, to support this initiative. All right, thank you very much. Mr. Bungu. Yes, thank you. The public deserve access to public land. Currently, this is not so. Government needs to step up. The land is the people's, and no one has the right to prevent folks from accessing public land. And any party that prevents to access, uh, uh, prevents to, prevents to uh, deny access to public land should be heavily fined. And this is something that I will move towards. Nobody should get in the way of people and public land. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Adamson. Actually, I've never heard of it before, but uh, in my 12 years of uh, local government, um, there, was, there have been many things that I've never heard before, but what we do is we get all the information, talk to all the players, and try to come up with a compromise, and I would be willing doing that if I'm elected. Right. Thank you very much. And Ms. Taggart. Thank you. Um, I have met with the Ashcroft Slough Society and uh, talked to them about their uh, plans. The um, thing that hasn't been mentioned here is it's not the Ashcroft Terminal and the Ashcroft Slough Society that uh, seems to be the issue. The CN Mainline Rail goes right through and there is no um, access over the rail tracks. And um, going over the tracks is extremely dangerous and they have been very clear that anyone um, accessing the slough through their property is um, it is illegal and it is extremely dangerous. So uh, it's not two sides. It is um, the CN Rail has made their position very clear and for those of us who have dealt with the railways we know that it is a huge battle to um, <coughs> change a railway's mind. Thank you very much. So we're going to have one more question directed at all the candidates, and then the candidates will have an opportunity to direct one question to one of their fellow candidates here in the room. So this question, which is again for everyone, relates to connectivity. COVID-19 means that many more people are working from home or being educated at home. For this, they need fast, reliable internet service. What will you do to improve rural internet connectivity so that those living in rural communities do not continue to be disadvantaged when it comes to internet access? And we're going to start with Mr. Timms. Thank you. Yeah, the internet connectivity is an issue that I, I'm, I deal with personally on a daily basis in Lillooet. Uh, and, uh, and I've heard from other voters all across the riding that, uh, that this is a struggle that they face as well. So uh, certainly I am, I am more than willing to offer my support in the legislature and work with the federal government on uh, supporting grants and funding to ensure that our small communities and, uh, and rural communities receive adequate funding for, um, for internet because certainly it's the 21st century and in order to to operate in the 21st century, certainly within COVID-19, uh, everyone needs to have access to safe and reliable internet at home. All right, thank you, Mr. Bungu. Yes, I'm shocked that uh, the previous governments have not stepped up and provided fast, reliable uh, internet. I'm, I'm shocked. <laughs> in my opinion, in this day and age, internet access is a basic need. Immediately when I get to Victoria, I will advocate for fast, reliable internet access in all the communities of the Fraser and Nicola riding. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Adamson. Yes, this is a, a, a great concern to the rural. Um, I personally have been working on this uh, for my area uh, for years now, and the, the government seems to change the rules. All the, they announced they got like 600 million to go to it, and then they, they will say, oh, now you gotta, you gotta do something different. They keep changing, they keep re-announcing the same money but changing the rules. The, the fiber optic line goes right up the number one highway, right by many of these uh, communities. And all it would take would be a hub to go in to do it. Uh, it costs uh, 
I was told by TELUS half a million dollars a hub, and um, they don't want to spend that because there's not enough payback, but with a government grant, they would. So there's 600 million apparently on the table now, and it should be given to us. Thank you, Ms. Tigard. I agree with all the comments. Um, certainly COVID has uh, made all of us look at our internet and how it works and how it doesn't work. And so I would continue to advocate for uh, broadband and for um, equity in an essential service uh, that um, rural BC often doesn't see. And when we think about employment, we think about people working from home, we think about people moving into our communities and being able to do uh, work from home, uh, we're limited because of our internet access. And we need to not have that as a barrier. So um, I will continue the work. If there's tons of money on the table, we need to grab it. Thank you very much. And Mr. Shumahetsa. Thank you for the question. Um, I, I agree, it's a, it's a really important issue. I remember uh, living in Kamloops at, at a point and then I moved back to Merritt and that was one of the questions I had is, well, how's the internet speed in Merritt? And uh, so it's, a, it's an issue. Um, I was asked the question when I visited Ashcroft last week and I know uh, there is issues specific to reliability of internet. I believe that rural communities should have the same uh, reliable internet as urban centers. And the NDP has invested in communities across the prov province, so there's, they have more reliable internet. I think we need to continue doing that, not just in urban centers, but in small, small communities like Ashcroft. And if I'm elected MLA, I will do everything I can to make sure we all have reliable internet. Thank you. Thank you. So now each candidate will have an opportunity to direct one question at one fellow candidate. The other candidates do not have an opportunity to answer it as well. It is one on one, if you will. So <laughs> gloves are off. We're going to get ready for this. We're going to start with Mr. Bungu and you may direct one question at one of your fellow candidates. I'm okay. I have, I don't have any questions for my can, uh, fellow candidates. I think they're doing a wonderful job. Answering All right. The questions that have been brought forward. Okay, thank you very much. And Mr. Adamson, do you have a question for one of your fellow candidates? Yes, I do. Um, <clears throat> for Jackie Tagger. As I was mentioning earlier, uh, it's a moral test for a government how it treats its weakest members the sick, the needy, the handicapped, the old, and the children. And in the province of British Columbia, according to Section 14.1 and 14.2 of the Child and Family Protection Act, clearly states if you know of someone who is being abused and do nothing about it, you can be sentenced to six months in jail or a $10,000 fine or both. So Jackie, when Wes Pidgeon, a professional counselor, came to you and talked to you about child abuse in the Maple Adolescent Treatment Center, psychological and forensics um, for the last stop for troubled youth in, in Fraser Nicola and the province, um, you did nothing. Were you protecting the party or were you, you weren't protecting the children and this this gentleman went to all three parties, so everybody did the same thing. So um, could I get an answer on that, please? Thank you, and thank you for the question. I can assure you, as someone who spent many years on school board, I'm well aware of the responsibilities in regards to child abuse. Uh, it would be absolutely inappropriate for me to uh, talk about a file that's in my office in public. So I'm not going to um, answer that in that way, but I assure you, I am very well aware of the responsibility around child abuse and reporting. All right, thank you very much. And now, Ms. Taggart, you have an opportunity to ask a question of a fellow candidate. Okay, um, this is to Jonah. So Jonah, uh, our parties, the Green and the BC Liberals, agreed to work collaboratively to meet the challenge of COVID-19 with the NDP. Um, our health 
uh, people uh, worked with Adrian Dix, and I think the people of British Columbia appreciated that. John Horgan took that goodwill and threw it in our faces by tearing up the CASA agreement and calling a snap election. How do you and your party reconcile this behavior? And how will it affect your working relationship with the NDP? That's a good question, Jackie. Thank you very much. Uh, and certainly, we will have to do, you know, depend. Uh, the CASA agreement was an agreement that was signed by both of our parties, and it ushered in, a, you know, a, an era of great party cooperation uh, and good, transparent, and effective government. For the, for the last three and a half years. And I was very upset that John Horgan uh, essentially ripped up the CASA agreement. Uh, he said it wasn't, you know, he wanted power. And I, I feel like um, when, when, the, when the NDP were not getting the votes that they wanted from the Greens uh, this summer on bills such as Bill 17, which I believe I emailed your office about, um, you know, he said, well, he had a little bit of a tantrum and, uh, and called an election. So I, I, I fully believe that uh, we're going to have to do some soul searching after this election. Thank you. Mr. Shumahetsa, your opportunity to ask a question. Thank you. Uh, this question is for Jackie. In the past, uh, Lori Thronis, your BC Liberal colleague, has defended conversion therapy which causes harm and trauma to LGBTQ children and youth. And it just came out in the media today that Thronis compared the NDP campaign promise to provide free contraception to eugenics. Uh, due to the fact that Lori Thronis, uh, his views have been publicly known for a long time, uh, as caucus chair, why didn't you insist he be removed from the BC Liberal caucus earlier? Thank you. Thank you very much for the question. As uh, the public is aware, uh, Lori Thronis has resigned, and um, the leader has been very um, clear that our party does not agree with the statements by Mr. Thronis. And uh, with his resignation, um, he, he's gone. All right, thank you. And Mr. Timms. Thank you. This one's to Jackie as well. <laughs> Apologize. Well, me, guys. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Mr. Bangu. But I, I really want to know, um, Jackie, the, the BC Liberal platform fails to mention climate change uh, at all in the 47 pages that make up your platform. So I'm interested in how your party plans to, uh, to handle and deal with one of the largest crises that... Uh, people in my generation are going to have to deal with. Thank you very much for the question, Jonah. And I would be the first one to tell you I'm not an expert on climate change and I'm learning every day. Um, but we have an incredible opposition critic to climate and that is MLA um, Peter Millibar. I talked to Peter about uh, climate change and what our position is and what we should be uh, talking about. And uh, Peter's, Peter indicated that we, we need to properly support and advance innovation for new clean tech as, we, uh, as society transitions from fossil, fossil fuels. And this will ensure BC is not only dropping our own carbon footprint, but will position us to be a global leader in the exporting of our new clean energy technologies in the world. And I have children and grandchildren. I am very committed to the environment, and uh, I can assure you that uh, I listen and support um, climate change. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, we go back to another question which is directed at everyone, and we will be starting off with Mr. Bungu for the first reply. Since the opening of the Coquihalla Highway in 1986, travel and business along the Fraser Canyon Highway has decreased substantially, forcing many businesses to close and all communities along that corridor to lose residents. How would you help rejuvenate the Canyon Highway to increase tourism, travel, and business? Mr. Bungu. I think it's a matter of, firstly, I think it's a, an amazing drive. It's very beautiful and it's, uh, 
it is a, a vital tourist attraction. I think here what we need to do is work with the local uh, tourist organizations, um, empower them, and bring attention to the beauty that is uh, the Fraser Canyon. Thank you. All right, thank you. Mr. Adamson. Yes, uh, I've been working on this for the, my whole 12 years of being a local government. Um, if you're driving on the number one by Hunter Creek coming uh, north, or you'll see two containers, one on top of each other, and there's a, there's a slogan that says, number one highway for a reason. Uh, I was partners with uh, Boston Bar, Hope, and myself, we put that up. But our fir my first slogan, which got turned down, was get off the Cope, experience the real BC. I think that anybody who, who makes this trip loves it. Like People come from all over the world to, to drive the Fraser Canyon and walk on the Alexander Bridge, the old one, which is falling down unless we do some work on it. So I think the, the government has to put some money into making these little pearls all along the number one so that people will travel it and promote it all, yeah. Thank you very much. Mr. Thank you very much. And uh, I am an absolute supporter of the Fraser Canyon. Uh, we partnered with the village of Lytton in the last uh, 18 months to look at the canyon as a corridor. Uh, we invited First Nations, um, all of the ministries, um, the, the tourism destination groups, and people from Hope to Cache Creek to sit down in a room and talk about a master tourism plan. That plan is underway right now. Um, it is not that uh, we're going to tell people how to do things. We want to know what exciting things communities are doing, both First Nations and uh, small communities through the corridor. We want to um, enhance what they're doing by looking at highways, viewpoints, lookouts, uh, washrooms. Um, there's some exciting things happening. And uh, just on that, uh, Boston Bar recently made the announcement that, that they got close to $2 million to refurbish their um, train station. It's the first step. Thank you. Mr. Shumahetsa. Thank you for the question. I remember being a young person and, and visiting my, my grandparents in Spencer's Bridge, and I remember there was a gas station there, there was, uh, you know, there was restaurants there, and it was a vibrant place, and, and of course, all through the canyon. And I believe that uh, there are issues through the Fraser Canyon with unemployment, and, and uh, we need to be able to move uh, forward in a way where we support local people in the communities through the Fraser Canyon. Um, and uh, I agree, we don't want to tell them what to do. We need to support them in fulfilling their dreams and vision for what they would like to see. Um, I think we need to uh, support small business. We need to support tourism. And if we do that, uh, we'll come to a, a good place for everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Timms. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'd be very interested in reading that uh, Master Tourism Plan, Jackie. It uh, sounds very interesting. And uh, yeah, like others have said, I, I believe that the canyon is beautiful. Um, every time I drive through it, it's stunning. Um, but we do need to partner with, uh, with communities and yeah, listen to what they have to say. And, and like Mr. Shumahetsa said, listen to what their plans are for their communities and then see what we can do to provide that uh, you know, we want to be able to provide them uh, a highway to, to supporting their dreams and, uh, and certainly I, I support working with those communities. Uh, one thing though that I, I've recognized and I've seen is that uh, a lot of our highways, we, we don't have places to stop and when we do, uh, the trash bins are often full and, and it's, unfortunately it's not very pretty to look at. Uh, just today I saw a trash bag that was just hanging out. So I, I fully believe that we need to offer support to our communities. All right, thank you very much. And another question um, for everyone, and we'll be starting with Mr. Adamson. Sure. If elected, will you work to reinstate and continue the Rural Dividend Fund? Yes. I, 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 I was disappointed when it was taken away. Uh, there was money that uh, all the small communities um, 
need to, to build their infrastructure. Um, when it was taken away by the NDP to put to uh, the people who lost their jobs in forestry, you know, uh, that I, I feel sorry for the people and, and of course they need support, but you don't take it away from one group to give it to another group. You come up with some other money. So yes, I will fight to get that back. It's a very useful tool for small communities. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Taggart. The Rural Dividend Fund was brought into place by the BC Liberals in uh, recognition of the challenge uh, that we were seeing in the forest industry. And uh, how do we help uh, small communities start those projects? And um, I have to say that uh, for the Master uh, Tourism Plan, we had applied through Rural Dividend and were very disappointed when uh, the money was pulled. Lots of mayors, lots of MLAs uh, lobbied, and, and regional <coughs> district people lobbied for the return of the funds. Uh, we will return the Rural Dividend Fund if we are elected. Thank you. Mr. Shumahetsa. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, we need to do everything we can to uh, support uh, rural communities in the future who need support and grants um, to get their businesses off the ground. And uh, the Rural Dividend Fund is something uh, that I will go to Victoria and, and have discussions with uh, my colleagues if I'm elected MLA to make sure that we continue to support communities and entrepreneurs, business people that need a step up when it comes to um, moving the economy forward and creating jobs for people. Thank you very much. Mr. Timms. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I was shocked when the NDP, uh, you know, withdrew funding from the Rural Dividend Fund. Um, for a party that says that they care about rural communities, taking away funding is not a way to show that. Um, I know several nonprofits in Lillooet who are depending on, on that grant money to, to do some great projects and, and provide some great services for the community there. Um, and certainly our, our forestry sector needed support, but uh, taking it from nonprofits is not the place to do it. And I, I, I appreciate Mr. Schumahetsa's comments on uh, if he's elected, but unfortunately with the NDP, uh, you have to toe the party line. Everybody votes the same way there. So thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Bungu. The rural, rural dividend fund is required by municipalities. Municipalities are now hurting because it was pulled. It was irresponsible of the new democratic government to scrub it. This placed many municipalities in an unfair position. Government needs to work better with municipalities and help them achieve their goals. <coughs> government must do more. I will fight for the Rural Dividend Fund and I will also fight to double it because we need it. Thank you. Thank you. And this question is uh, directed first uh, to, well, to Mr. Shumahetsa, and it uh, is about the Rural Dividend Fund. When he announced in September 2019 that the Rural Dividend Fund was being curtailed, not cancelled, his words, um, Mr. Horgan said, it will be back. Now, when criticized by rural local governments for the curtailment, he compared them to reporters with greedy children saying they want everything at once. Hearing Mr. Horgan say something like this, how do you convince rural communities that the NDP has their back and understands their concerns? Thank you for the question. Uh, I, I haven't heard anything about that quote um, in the past, um, but what I would say is I'm from a rural community. I'm from Merritt. I have family that lives here in Ashcroft, Cash Creek, Spence's Bridge, and I'm running because I believe we need to support rural communities. And we have, uh, we need a, a rural MLA that can work with John Horgan in government so uh, we have an effective advocate um, so we can support our rural communities as best we can. And if I'm elected, I will do everything I can to support our communities, whether it be Merritt, Hope, Ashcroft, Cash Creek, Clinton, uh, for the benefit of everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Now, does anyone else would like to respond to that? Um, um, okay, uh, Ms. Taggart, Mr. Bangu, in that order. Well, um, 
contrary to the comments from Aaron, um, I have found that uh, John Horgan uh, doesn't know there's life above hope. Uh, there seems to be such a concentration in the urban area in Vancouver Island by the NDP that we have been left out of the equation and the last three years have shown that. Um, I am known in the legislature as uh, one of the fire ladies. Uh, myself, Cora Lee and uh, Donna Barnett uh, were at every door at every ministry and including the Premier talking about how much help we needed after the fires. And I have to say, uh, often we're disappointed in the response from uh, ministers and the Premier. Um, I fight hard uh, for the interior of British Columbia to be noticed, and that's my job as an MLA, and that's what I'll continue to do. Thank you. And Mr. Bungu? And, all right, thank you. And all right, Mr. Bungu, you're next. Yes, uh, the NDP <coughs> candidate can believe whatever he wants but he must do what his master says. And if his master does not want the rural dividend fund, then there's nothing the NDP candidate can do. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Adamson and then yes, Mr. Tim. It, it, I agree with uh, um, Ms. Staggered there. It's obvious that the, the NDP are only concentrating on the rural because that's where their vote is. They, they building I think, them. Excuse, I think you mean the urban. No. You said. Oh yeah. Sorry. Sorry. I do. Just yeah. For clarification. Thank, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, for the urban because that's where their vote is. So they're, they're spending billions on them. They they do not care about the rural. There's really uh, nobody speaking up for the rural. I would like to be that voice. And um, <laughs> this is where all the wealth comes from, not the cities. So they should be really looking after the world. Yeah, thank okay. you. Thank you, and Mr. Timms. Thank you. Uh, Aaron says that when he's elected as an MLA, he'll, uh, he'll go to Victoria and advocate for small towns and communities. But uh, unfortunately, the NDP is a party that whips their vote. MLAs have to toe the party line there. Uh, and when we, you know, after the election all is all set and done, uh, we'll have uh, another minority government, and I'm sure that the that both uh, the NDP and the Liberals will be more willing to listen to a, a Green uh, party more so than a, an NDP or a Liberal uh, candidate. All right, thank you. The next question is uh, directed at all the candidates. We're gonna be starting with uh, Jackie Taggart. And the question is, how will you encourage more government-to-government -government relationships between First Nations and local governments in the riding? Well, um, since becoming the MLA in 2013, we have done um, a lot of outreach to First Nations communities. Um, our project in the canyon certainly um, includes all the First Nations and the invite went out to everyone. Um, I've built relationships. Um, it was a pleasure to work with Aaron when Aaron was um, in his position as Chief of Lower Nick. Um, I think that we, we have done outreach as um, consistently as we possibly can. We've certainly uh, built relationships over um, any uh, ask for assistance. And um, we are one of the ridings that has the largest number of First Nations uh, communities in it. And First Nations relationships are incredibly important. We value them, we respect them. And we know that uh, good decisions are made when you are inclusive. Thank you. And next is Mr. Manessa. Thank you for the question. I believe that it's uh, extremely important that uh, the provincial government work with Indigenous communities across the riding. Uh, it's my understanding there's 27 uh, communities uh, in Fraser Nicola, Indigenous communities. And uh, when I was uh, chief of the Lower Nicola Indian Band, um, I made it a priority uh, not just to, to work with other First Nation communities, but municipalities. Uh, we had an excellent relationship with the City of Merritt. We had uh, excellent relationships with uh, Logan Lake and, and other and business. And I believe if we all want to move forward in a, in a prosperous way uh, where we can take care of the environment, our waters, and 
move forward in a, in a good way, uh, we need to build those relationships so they're stronger. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. Uh, building better relationships with uh, indigenous governments is my job day to day. Um, when I first joined the Ministry of Forests a year and a half ago, I, uh, I realized that the ministry hadn't been out to a, a shellath community, that is a community out by Lillooet, uh, in several years. And as a, you know, when we're trying to build relationships with our, with indigenous communities, we have to go out and see the territory and, and see, you know, it's a beautiful territory that we have here in the riding and, and we certainly need to go out and see it. So uh, one of the reasons that I'm running to be your MLA here is because I've taken a look at the tools that government employees and government as a whole has to work on improving our relationships with First Nations. I've found it's not enough and I want to give us more tools to do so. Thank you. Minister Bungu. Yes, uh, it's all about perspective. I will be your friend, I will listen, I will fight for their rights and the necessities they require to live a standard life. Much more work must be done. And again, my philosophy here is develop friendships, be a friend, treat them like a friend. Thank you. Yes, in the 12 years that I've been elected, I have gone to many community to community functions. Uh, this is provided by funding coming out of UBCM to, to try to um, make friends, like, like the gentleman said. I, I have uh, eight bands in my area, and I believe I have a really good relationship with everyone. I treat everybody the same. Um, to me, it's we're all neighbors, and if we can work together, uh, it's 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 good. And uh, yeah, we're just all people working together, trying to make a better life for everybody. Thanks. All right, thank you. Um, our next question is directed at Jackie Taggart. Why would people in Fraser Nicola be interested in paying for the bridge to replace the Massey Tunnel? Wouldn't those funds be better invested in better roads throughout the province, not just in the Lower Mainland? Infrastructure is needed all across the province. And um, I think that when you look at um, budgets and highways and uh, projects for the region, we lobby long and hard uh, for projects in our region. We have a $60 million project on the 10 mile slide happening right now, committed to by the BC Liberal government. It's an incredible engineering feat uh, and it's incredible that in rural BC we got that commitment. And that was through strong relationships with First Nations, with the community, with the Minister of Transportation, and we were successful. We need infrastructure all over BC. And um, although we often think that it all goes to the coast, I can assure you it doesn't. Thank you. Would any other candidates like an opportunity? Mr. Bungu? Government has failed the people. Our infrastructure has been falling apart for 30 years, in my opinion. We need to pick up the ball. We need to repair our infrastructure. To be honest, there's underdeveloped countries uh, that have better roads than we do. And naturally, not the entire country, but parts of countries, I've walked them. And we need to step up. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to have? Mr. Shumahetsa. Thank you. Uh, we need more jobs and we need better infrastructure uh, in this riding closer to home. Uh, we've invested in people and communities through a new recovery investment fund. Uh, this program will deliver $3 billion a year above and beyond our, our existing $23 billion in new capital commitments over three years to drive new growth and investments. Uh, the funding will be used in communities across BC to build new schools, hospitals, child care spaces, roads and transit, creating more than 18,000 jobs uh, every year. Uh, as we move through this pandemic, um, it's very important that uh, we keep our economy moving forward and by investing in and in putting money into an, uh, infrastructure, uh, we're going to 
move in the right direction and keep people employed. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Adamson. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> before the government privatized the roads, they were better maintained. They were they're better built, and people. I, I know uh, my neighbor. He used to take the plow home, and as soon as the snow came, he was out there plowing. Um, he said that the 20 years that he did it, uh, the number one highway had only been closed maybe three times. It's gone private, and, and any time you get a tiny bit of snow, it's closed. And there, we're, we're trying to build our roads the cheapest way possible instead of building them well so that they last a long time. And we're allowing companies to bid uh, on jobs that they cannot complete in that season, so they start late and then they they're, uh, deteriorate really quickly. So we need to do a lot better. Right, thank you. And we have a question directed for you, Mr. Adamson, sure. or to you. Um, and it's for the ind ind independent candidate, uh, formerly NDP executive. Mm -hmm. How can your participation in this campaign be seen as anything other than old style NDP backroom fighting that has kept the party from power for most of its existence? Oh, that's a good question. It, it, it's, um, I'm not just uh, fighting the NDP, I'm fighting all parties. I, I think you'll see in other writings too, it, more people are running independently. The party system is flawed. What, what it does is it puts uh, power to a few hands and, and they, they go top down, not bottom up. You know, uh, democracy is the people, not the, the party. And these parties, they, uh, they, they, their members are totally believed in everything they say, and so they allow them to get away with stuff. Um, so I'm not fighting the NDP. I'm not fighting um, because, you know, I'm mad that they picked Aaron. I'm fighting for democracy. And Parties did not give democracy. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else have anything to say on that? And if not, we have a question for Mr. Timms. Um, under the Supply and Confidence Agreement signed by the NDP and Green Party, the Greens supported the NDP and enabled them to form government, but have been accused of selling out some of their ideals and principles by failing to stand up to the NDP when their actions as government differed from the Green platform and principles. What will the Greens do to ensure they do not abandon the principles and the people who voted for them? Thank you. Uh, I, I'd like to start out by saying that the Green Party is, is powered by people and we are, we're community-oriented folks. So we, uh, we listen to the communities around us and we listen to the people who make up our party. Uh, and, uh, you know, from, you know, like I said last night uh, when this question was asked, I wasn't in the room uh, where it happened uh, when that question, when uh, when the Green Party at the time was considering, um, you know, supporting CASA, uh, the Confidence and Supply Agreement, but uh, from what I understand, the the party promised to support the NDP on their budget votes, uh, not necessarily on every single bill that was passed. So we agreed to support their budgets uh, because we didn't we believed that the, the province and, our, and all the communities that we live in uh, didn't want to go right back to an election uh, because as we're seeing right now, early elections are bad for democracy and it's bad for our government, especially in times of uh, crisis such as now. Thank you. Anyone else have anything to say? Uh, Mr. Shumahetsa? Thank you. Um, I just wanted to uh, just talk about uh, the importance of, of the environment and. I care deeply about the environment, our beautiful lands and waters, and, and uh, when I was, uh, well, I have a degree in environmental studies. I did my undergraduate in environmental studies, and uh, I have a track record in protecting the environment with, with others in, in the Nicola Valley, and uh, I, I fought hard uh, against the, uh, keep having land application of biosolids in the Nicola Valley to protect our, our animals, our medicines, our waters, and our and our plants. Uh, we were in 2016 at Lower Nicola Band, we installed over 300 solar panels 
on our community school, and at the time it was the largest community solar project. So I believe we need uh, people that care deeply about the environment in government, and, and that's why I'm running, one of the many reasons I'm running, but uh, I just wanted to share, um, share that. Thank you. Thank you. And anyone else? Yes, uh, Mr. Adamson? Yes. The parties only care about themselves. You know, this, this just proves it. Uh, oh, jeez. Grab my thought. Can I have the All question? right. Okay. I can go to, uh, yeah. I can go to Mr. Bungu again sure. first and then go back yeah. to you. Okay. Hey, Mr. Could Bungu. You, oh. Yes, uh, in my opinion, all the parties are failing us when it comes to the environment. The solutions that they present damage the environment in one way or another. We need a new perspective. We need to approach this from a new angle. We need to work in harmony with nature. And when I do get into government, I will provide that perspective. I will look for methods that haven't been looked at before. I will find a way where we harmonize with nature. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And Mr. Okay. Adamson? Yeah, okay. thanks. Sorry about that. Um, the parties only care about themselves. When, when the NDP and the Greens were trying to get elected, they said they were going to stop Site C. And um, once they got elected, Site C went on, even though they, they said they, they would stop it, especially the Greens. And the Greens didn't call pulled down the government then. They didn't pull down the government when they decided that they were going to spend millions uh, for LNG and, and do fracking, like fracking. That's one of the worst. And the Greens supported it. I, I think that the parties only care about themselves, not the people. We've got to get rid of the parties, send independence to the, to the government to, so they can represent you, the people. Thank you. And Mr. Bungu, don't think you're getting off scot-free. We have one question directed uh, straight at Finally. you. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Thank you, whoever asked uh, you. I <laughs> didn't want you to feel like the Maytag repairman there, so um, I'm dating myself with that reference. What do you feel you can accomplish as an independent? I can accomplish everything I've listed, everything that I will be working for. Um, it doesn't matter if I am an independent or not. I have a voice. That voice will be heard. Moreover, I'm very familiar with how to work with government to achieve the appropriate ends. And it's a matter of working with the bureaucrats, really. A lot of many politicians, in my opinion, uh, they're figureheads, whereas the bureaucrats are doing the heavy lifting. So if we can work with the bureaucrats, we can get done what needs to be done. Moreover, as an elected official, I have the legal right to speak. No one can prevent that or stop me from it. And I will use my power, I will use my mind, and I will use everything that is available to me to achieve uh, what I've laid forward. Thank you. All right, thank you. And so before we get into the wrap-up, we have one final question directed at all the candidates. The first one to answer it will be Mr. Shumahetsa, and the question is, Fraser Nicola is a very large riding with many individual communities and regions, all with different challenges and issues. If elected, how will you maintain a visible and meaningful presence in all areas of the riding? so that you can understand and address these challenges and issues and take those back to Victoria. Mr. Shumahetsa. Thank you for the, for the question, and it's a great question. Um, as the, the, the person who asked the question knows, this is a vast riding, and there are many different uh, people from different backgrounds, and they live in different places. And me, if I'm elected as the MLA, I'll be first, the first to say I don't have the solutions to all the problems. I think to be an effective MLA in a, and to represent people well, one, you need to engage and, and have conversations, but most of all, one needs to listen. And you need to engage and listen to as many people as you can. Of course, during COVID, it's more difficult, uh, but I think if we focus on listening to small business owners, we focus on uh, indigenous peoples, mayors and councils, community leaders, uh, that we 
I can help facilitate real change in the riding and, and move forward and be that powerful voice in Victoria. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Timms. Thank you. Again, this riding is quite vast and I'm sure all the candidates are recognizing that it takes a lot of time to go from one end to the other uh, to ensure that we're listening to everybody in all the communities. Uh, so certainly I, I recognize that and I understand that and I would, uh, as your MLA, I would love to be able to schedule uh, consistent meetings in all of the communities so that I am hearing from everyone within the riding, not only from Merritt and Hope. Uh, as a, as a young person working Monday to Friday, uh, you know, 8 to 4.30, um, I recognized that one of the few times Jackie came to my community was in the early afternoon and I was working, so I wasn't able to attend. So, you know, certainly uh, I would think about when I'm coming to communities so that I can hear from the, uh, the vast majority of people, uh, regardless of their economic backgrounds. Thank you. Mr. Bungu? A political party representative cannot represent the constituents. The representative upholds the party leader's vision. The representative might listen to the constituents, but cannot take action the same way that an independent can. As a city councillor for the city of Merritt, I walk the streets. I sit in coffee shops. I purposely sit in coffee shops and work so that I can interact with my constituents. And I plan to take those same tactics and techniques to every community in the riding. I will be spending time in ridings. I will be walking the streets. I will be in your coffee shops. I will make myself self uh, available. Moreover, I will have a strong social media presence so it doesn't matter where you are in the writing, you will always be able to get a hold of me. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Adamson. I actually don't feel like it's a big writing. It, it's, it's uh, I do a lot of driving, so to me, three hour drive is, is really nothing. I, I, I know that uh, over the years, I have dealt with uh, any elected local official that has been elected for the last 10 years. I've met at conferences. We discuss together the different problems in, in all the different communities. And a lot of it's the same. People want jobs. People want uh, health. You know, it, it's the same things. Um, I would probably open offices in Hope for a few days, Lillooet and Ashcroft and Merritt split the week like that. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Ms. Taggart. Well, I can tell you the last two years have been spent on the road. Our commitment to go to where people live uh, was one of our first commitments to the work. And uh, people appreciate that. People in small communities are tired of being told to come to the big centers. And um, myself and my constituency assistant have spent many hours on the road. As I suggested tonight, be careful driving home and watch for animals and watch for snow because this is a diverse, huge riding and there is never a day that's the same. You have to be passionate about the work. You have to love what you're doing or it shows on your face that you don't. And it is 24-7. Uh, people's problems don't happen Monday to Friday, 8 to 4. We're available all the time. And I love attending events, I love being in community, and I love doing the job of the MLA. All right, thank you. Okay. So we're going to give each of the candidates two minutes to wrap up. And we are going to go in the reverse order to how we started. So we are going to let Mr. Adamson go first. You have two minutes. Okay, thank you. Uh, I know most of you out there don't know who I am, uh, but I have served 12 years as local government, and, and I'd like to be your voice in, in Victoria. The three parties, they don't care about us. They care about the rich, the powerful, the urban. I want to be a voice for the small and rural BC. I want to try to get a replacement bridge for Spencer's Bridge. 
uh, urgent care center for Ashcroft and keep the forest facilities and little bit merit supply move wood so it keeps on going. You know, I know you don't know me. I come across a little uh, rough or stumbling, but if you ask anybody that has dealt with me in the last 12 years, even people that disagree with me will tell me that I have a great heart and I do this for the good of the people. So if you elect me, I will fight for you. I will do my best to make everything happen that needs to be happening. I'll work with the, the mayors and the councillors in the small towns and the First Nation leaders. And together, we'll, we'll make a better place. In that, uh, in, sorry, here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up is Jackie Taggart. Well, thank you very much, and thank you very much for the questions. It's a pleasure to be in the room with fellow candidates and to feel the energy in the room. Um, I want to apply for the job of MLA. I want you to know that I would work hard for you and that I have done in the last two terms. Um, I want to tell you about some of our successes. We um, have the $60 million 10-mile slide project happening in Lillooet, unprecedented in the riding. We have the emergency room in Merritt expansion that was started uh, when Terry Lake was the uh, Minister of Health and um, was completed um, in this last term. We have the Clinton Seniors Housing. As difficult as it was as a process, we were tenacious, we made sure government knew who we were, and we made sure that shovels got in the ground. And I'm looking forward to the opening. Um, in our platform, we have promised $2 million towards the Maccabee Fossil Pit. And uh, that is a world-renowned site that would bring incredible um, attention to this area and uh, produce jobs. Uh, we also have um, seniors housing on the list of infrastructure projects. I've talked to every community in the riding, and people are interested in seniors' supportive housing. And we have money in this budget to do that. Uh, roads and bridges, maintenance, repair in rural BC. That is a commitment from the BC Liberals. We also want to deal with child care. We want to deal with seniors care. We want to get um, people off of opioids. We want a real pathway to get people off of drugs. We are the party that can lead us through the recovery needed after this pandemic. We have hope, we have a plan, and we have a leader that can get us there. I ask for your support on October 24th. Thank you very much. Uh, next, Aaron Schumahetza. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Barbara and the Ashcroft HUD staff for doing a great job hosting uh, this debate uh, this evening. I'd like to thank everybody at home participating in tonight's debate. Uh, We've never expected to be here in a global pandemic, but in BC, we're doing the right thing, following the guidance of Dr. Bonnie, Bonnie Henry to make sure we are safe. This election is not just about the next few months, but about the next four years. And the question is quite clear. Who do you want to lead you and where do you want to go? The BC Liberal plan ensures that the wealthiest get the most benefit with $3 billion in tax breaks that you'll pay for and cuts to services that your family rely on. The BC NDP will focus on building a BC where strong public services like health care are always there when people need them, where workers and small businesses are at the front of our economic recovery. My name is Aaron Chumahetza, and I'm your NDP candidate in Fraser Nicola. Whether you vote in the advance polls or on October 24th, I'm asking for your vote so we can keep moving forward. Thank you. And thank you very much. Next up is Jonah Timms. Thank you very much for having me here tonight. And I, I hope tonight it's will be informative for everyone that was listening and watching.
have heard a lot of your concerns and I am willing and ready to listen and work for you in Victoria. Because we need Greens at the table to ensure that our government is transparent and works for the best interests of everyone. Not the top 1%, not people living in Vancouver, Victoria, but for everyone. Now the Greens are really excited about what the next four years will bring for British Columbia. We have a plan to ensure that life is more affordable, jobs remain in our local in our communities, and the future is more secure for our children. Again, everyone, I'm Jonah Timms. I'm running as your BC Greens candidate for Fraser Nicola, and uh, I'm happy to be here. Thank you very much. I hate to do this. Jonah, can you do your first 40 seconds again? I had you muted by accident. Oh. I, <laughs> I wasn't timing myself. <laughs> Can, sh should I just go through my whole thing again? Yeah. Or? Yeah. Sure. Okay. I was kind of off the cuff, so I'll have I'm to remember. <laughs> Don't worry. Tell me when. Okay. No. Okay. okay. Thank you, everyone, for having me here tonight. And I hope tonight was informative for everyone listening and watching. And while everyone here tonight has said that we don't want to be here in a pandemic doing this election, we know that there was one party who chose to be here in a pandemic doing this election. Now, for the last three and a half years, BC has had a government that worked together. We talked about what was best for British Columbians, and then we enacted the legislation to make it happen. The BC Green Party was instrumental in this unprecedented level of cooperation in government. And I want our communities to be resilient. I want our people to be able to work in the communities, and I want our resources to be managed better so that jobs remain local. Believe me, I have heard many concerns from throughout the riding, and I am willing and able and ready to listen to work for you in Victoria, because we need Greens at the table to ensure that our government is transparent and works for the best interests of everyone. Not the top 1%, not only for people living in Vancouver and Victoria, but for everyone. Now the Greens are really excited about what the next four years will bring for this province. We have plans to make life more affordable, to ensure that our future is secure in the face of many crises. Again, I'm Jonah Timms. I'm running as your BC Greens candidate for Fraser Nicola. I'm excited and happy to be here tonight, and I'm looking forward to being your MLA in the future. Thank you, and Mike Bungu. Thank you. In this day and age, sadly, it's very difficult to establish a family and maintain a family. For many, a family is out of reach. And for those who've managed to create one, stability is constantly threatened. Too many retirees are struggling, and it should not be this way. They gave their life to the system, and they deserve better. Where are their golden years? In my opinion, not enough is done to support small business. They struggle and they have for too long. In my opinion, the big parties focus too much on helping large corporations survive and thrive. And too often, the little folk is forgotten about. Mental health and drug addictions is taking a toll on our communities. We must address this problem now. If we do not, what will our communities look like in 20, 30 years? In my lifetime, I've seen the problem grow to unimaginable levels. Now is the time to take action. Bo both the big parties come and go, and our hardships continue to grow. A sense of hope is lost. In my opinion, they have failed us. But when an election comes about, they throw crumbs your way with one hand and take from your pocket with the other. Our communities require help and healing. We are regressing and not progressing, and I'm tired of the crumbs the political parties throw our way. We deserve more. This is our province. The wealth of this province is ours. Send me to Victoria so that, so that I can bring back the pie. I will advocate for the family, the retiree, small business, and those with mental health and, and drug addictions. I will fight for you. You are not alone. As an independent, I can better represent you than a party rep, as I will not be trapped inside a party box. This provincial election support the underdog. Your vote matters. Allow me to serve you. Elect Mike Bangu as your MLA, people before politics. 
Well, thank you very much. I'd like to thank everyone who was watching at home. I'd like to thank the Hub Online Network and the Ashcroft Hub for the venue and the technicians and the excellent support here. Now, advanced voting has now opened throughout the province, and there are several locations in Fraser Nicola where you can do advanced voting. Uh, Cash Creek Community Hall from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. There is one more day of advanced voting, and that is on Friday, the 16th of October. In Clinton, the advanced voting will be on the 16th and 17th of October from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. at the Clinton Memorial Hall. In Ashcroft, advanced voting starts on October 17th and continues through October 20th from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. at the Ashcroft Hub. General Voting Day is on Saturday, October 24th. The polls will again be open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Voting will be in Ashcroft at the Hub, in Cash Creek at the Community Hall, in Clinton at the Memorial Hall, and in Spence's Bridge at Clems Hall. So thank you again to everyone for watching, and I'd like to thank our candidates for uh, being all here with us tonight. Uh, we have Aaron Schumahetza representing the BC NDP party. We have Jonah Timms representing the BC Green Party. Mike Bungu, who is running as an independent candidate. Dennis Adamson, who is running as an independent candidate. And Jackie Taggart, who is running for the BC Liberal Party. Good luck to all the candidates, and please remember, get out and vote. Thank you and have a good night.